Good evening. Welcome to the uh, October 8th Administrative and Public Works Committee meeting. We have a quorum. Uh, motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of September 17, 2018. Second. Ma All in favor? Okay. Any discussion? Seeing there's no discussion, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, we'll move on with the consent calendar. A1, payroll, September 3rd, 2018 through September 16, 2018, $2,869,809.10 for action. A2, bills list, October 9th, 2018, Seven million two hundred sixty six thousand fifty four dollars and eighty cents BMO credit card activity period ending July 26 2018 one hundred ninety eight thousand two dollars and thirty eight cents fiscal year 2017 single audit report staff recommends City Council accept and place on file the single audit report of federal grant money received spent by the city of Evanston for the fiscal year ending 2000 ending December 31st, 2017, it's for action. A6, three-year agreement with LifeQuest Services Incorporated to provide collection agency services. Staff is recommending City Council authorize the City Manager to execute a three-year agreement with LifeQuest Services Incorporated to provide collection agency services at a rate of 21%. The contract provides service to the city for a period of three years with two additional one-year options for renewal for a total of five years. Funding of 21% service fee will be deducted from the overall, from the recovered revenue it's for action. A7, staff recommends city council authorize the city manager to execute a contract for landscape, architectural, and engineering services related to the garden park renovation project with Tesca Associates Incorporated uh, in the amount of $74,465.96. Funding will be provided from the Capital Improvement Program 2018 General Obligation Bond, which includes $75,000 budgeted for these services in 2018. This is for action. Can we remove that one, please, from the agenda? Removing A7. A8. Staff recommends that City Council authorize the City Manager to execute a contract for a 2018 CIPP Sewer Rehabilitation Contract B with Kenny Construction doing business as a Granite Inliner in the amount of $379,505. Funding for this project is from Sewer Fund, which has a uh, budget of 675000 with 425561 dollars remaining. This is for action. Audemann Rainey? Uh, I'm sorry. I have no problem with this, but I meant to take A5 off. I meant to take A5 off. Yeah, A5 is off. Yes. So we're okay on A8. Can you remove item A9, please? Yes. Removing A9. A10. Staff recommends City Council authorize the City Manager to execute a one-year extension for utility bill printing and mailing services beginning January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2019 with Seabeth Direct Incorporated in the amount of $53,800. This request includes services for the printing and mailing of the utility bills that will occur during fiscal year 2019. A breakdown of the funding can be found on the corresponding transmittal memorandum. It's for action. A12, staff recommend City Council approve a first-time application for a sidewalk cafe permit for Beer on Central, a Class K liquor establishment located at 1930 Central Street. 
The sidewalk cafe will consist of two tables with two seats each for a seating capacity of four and will operate Tuesday through Sunday. This is for action. A14, Transportation, Parking Committee, and staff recommend that City Council consider ratifying past practice for eligibility of on-street residential parking permits to include residences who were allowed to purchase a residential parking permit in 2018 that were not in the city code and direct the city manager to cause an ordinance to be drafted with the appropriate amendments to the city code. This is for action. A15. Staff recommends approval of the special event permit application from the last call Tavern Group to host a University of Michigan alumni tailgate event on September 29th, 2018 at the, excuse me? Yep, at the Evanston Wilmette Golf Course on hole number three. The tailgating will be allowed four hours prior to the start of the football game and conclude at the latest two hours after the completion of the football game. Costs for city services provided for events require 100% reimbursement from the sponsoring organization or event coordinator. This is for action. A16. Professional services, uh, staff recommend city council authorize the city manager to execute a professional services contract with Connolly's Academy Incorporated for the city of Evanston martial arts program running through. Uh, Can we remove that? Sure. Removing A-16? Yeah. A-17. Staff recommends city council authorize a new city manager to the city manager to execute a professional services contract with Diana Unger, Chicago Fencing Club, for the city of Evanston's fencing program run through Chandler Newberger Center. The contract is for three years with a mutual option to renew for two additional year options. The contract period will run from January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2021. Instruction expenses are paid from the Chandler Newberger General Fund. Compensation from the vendor is based on a percentage of resident rate revenues collected from program registrations. This is for action. A18, staff recommends City Council adoption of resolution 73R18, authorizing the city manager to execute the 2018 agreement with the Youth Job Center of Evanston to provide not less than 20 disconnected and unemployed young adults who are low, low moderate income residents, ages 18 to 25, with a career pathway plan that leads to educational work trade certification, employment, supportive services, career counseling, educational support, and transportation assistance over 24 months in an amount not to exceed $55,200 for fiscal year 2018 through 2019. Funding for this agreement is budgeted in Parks, Recreation, and Community Services, Youth and Young Adult Engagement Division, uh, which has a 2018 budget of $281,965 and a year-to-date balance of $208,822.72 prior to this agreement. Costs amount to approximately um, $2,760 per participant. That is for action as well. A19. Staff recommends City Council adoption of Resolution 71R18, authorizing the City Manager to execute an agreement between the City of Evanston and the James B. Moran Center for Youth Advocacy to provide legal services for not less than 15 Evanston residents to, to secure certificates of rehabilitation, expungement. Can you remove that one also? Yes. Removing A19. A20, staff recommends City Council adoption of Re Resolution 17R18, authorizing the City Manager to sign notification of grant awards to fund and operate a congregate senior meal uh, program at the Levy Center and Fleetwood Jordan Community Center. This is a reimbursement program in which the total amount of reimbursement the city will receive is solely dependent upon the number of lunches served and varies depending on the levels of participation. Funding for this program is budgeted in various line items in the Fleetwood Jordan Business Unit and Levy Center Business Unit. Overall budgeted expenses for 2018 and 19 program include staffing salary, Social Security, Medicare, advertising, 
program supplies and food costs, which is projected at $91,298. This is for action. A21, staff recommends City Council adoption of Resolution 76R18, authorizing the City Manager to sign notification of grant awards to fund and operate the Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program for the City of Evanston. This is a reimbursement program in which the total amount of reimbursement the City will receive is solely dependent upon the amount of funding utilized from the total budget. The, over, the overall program has a budget of $177,225 in business unit, which covers all operational expenses. The maximum reimbursement amount by age options is $55,399 for the period of October 1, 2018 through September 30th, 2019. This is for action. A22, staff recommends that the City Council authorize City Manager to enter into a lease renewal with the United States Postal Service Facilities Real Estate Division. For the Postal Service vehicles in the City of Evanston's parking garage at 1800 Maple Street, projected total revenue for the period from uh, November 1st, 2018 through October 31st, 2020 is $142,560. That's for action. Last on the consent calendar is A23. Staff recommends City Council adopt Resolution 75R18, authorizing the City Manager to execute an easement agreement with the property owner at 2222 Simpson Street for three-foot fence easement along McCormick Boulevard. The easement would be granted for a 50-year period. This is for action. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. I have A7, no? Well, there's A3 back here. Got it. A3. Um, Alderman Braithwaite? Where is A3? Oh, gosh. Items for consideration. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move item A3, the BMO Amazon credit cards, in the dollar amount of $16,866.06 for action. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Recused. Abstain. He abstain. Oh, any recusals? I abstain. <laughs> Thank you. Can I ask one question? I'm sorry, I don't oppose, but I, I did have a question on the bills list that didn't get answered around this. I know we continue to talk about local spending, and Alderman Braithwaite, you had asked for a column on the credit yeah. card report for where things were purchased from, but my question that I don't see answered here is, I know we talked about a policy for local spending, um, and I don't know if we've ever passed that or what that policy is to bring our credit card, our Amazon purchases down. Can someone address that? Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Yes, the, we have sent out the memo the city managers has to all the departments to focus on the local spending wherever it's possible. And if you look at the report, I think Alderman Braithwaite, I think, touched on the last couple of meetings about the, uh, we are trying to we are focus on uh, the purchasing, has been working with the other departments wherever possible to kind of bring in more um, outside vendors and outside purchase to the local purchase. Okay, so can you email me that, whatever sure. we sent out? Thank you. Moving on to A7. Five. A5. Five. 
A5, Ottoman Fleming. Oh, that was actually Ottoman Rainey who pulled off A5, right? The actual report. I was wondering if our auditors are here, if the um, Fire and Police Pension Fund auditors are here. Or a member of the audit committee. Uh, good evening again. Uh, May I have a motion? Move uh, it I'm for, for discussion. And a second? I second. Okay, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Yes, uh, this is the single audit about the federal expenses and no, the... No, no, no. Okay. The police and fire. Oh, the police and fire, I'm sorry. Pension fund. Oh, the pension yes. fund, yes. Uh, okay, I'll continue. Uh, <laughs> we, have the, <laughs> uh, we have Jason Franken, the, our actuary. He is here, and he can definitely go over the uh, police pension and the fire pension actuary report. Just a, a brief overview about, you know, what... Right, so if you look into the memo, uh, I have given the... attached the report we got from Faster and Faster. A uh, couple of uh, important numbers, like uh, there are three key numbers. Uh, one, they have given us the full report based on the assumption of the six and a quarter percent of investment rate of return. Uh, there is a supplemental valuation for both the police and fire pension based on six and a half percent, uh, Thank you. which was the rate approved by the council last year. And then there is a state minimum mandated, um, you know, which is required. So I have given all the three numbers for both the police and fire pension fund. And I mean, if you want, I mean, the, Jason is here from Foster and Foster to kind of briefly go over the numbers. Well, I think just a few important numbers, the, the um, variations, for example, while it was, um, we, we said 6.25 versus the 7.5 that we used to do, but the interest was generated at 8.22%, which was wonderful. Right. But then we had more people disabled, less people died, people are living longer. Some of those things are interesting in terms of what generates the requirement of the taxpayers having to right so that's where i mean I, that's why I, I mean i would rather defer it to the actuary to kind of go into the details about the mortality about the disability the investment rates just a little, just a little. <laughs> because uh, when people look at the number on their tax bill what we're billing them for it's important just to give a just a precy of how they come to that number right and so again um the actuary prepares the number uh, based on some of those things. The Alderman Rainey, you touch on that, you know, uh, disability payments and new retirees going into the from the active pool to the uh, retiree pool. Uh, investment rate of return, that's uh, one of the key things, and I guess both the pension funds have done pretty good in 2017, which has helped us. So if you look at the overall number, if we stay with the six and a half percent of the investment rate of return, um, it's just a little change, so which is a good sign. Uh, and um, if we go, yes, the difference again, the one of the numbers between six and a quarter percent versus six and a half percent, um, is almost a million dollar more under the six and a quarter percent <coughs> investment rate of return assumption. Um, state minimum mandated, yes, um, it's almost like a 2.8 million less than what we have done last year based on six and a half. Um, but again, it's up to the city council to decide um, about the funding. Thank you. Do you want the jury, Jason? I might be the only one interested. Okay. And I, I read the thing. I, I get it. I just thought maybe some. Okay. Else. Thanks. Well, question. Um, so this this is a bigger document, and I, you know, read what we had here. Um, is and I don't remember if we do this, but is there something, a little more concise, kind of like a like a one hundred and one a one page document we could put together for the public? Well, but still, that if you don't know what this means. Um, I mean, I can talk to you about this later, but I do think what Alderman Rainey is saying is important. We have citizens who are trying to figure out how we're funding the pension. They might only look at what's not funded versus what we are funding. Um, and so if there's like a little one-pager or paragraph you could put together that's very easy to understand for the citizens, that might be good to put online okay, somewhere. Okay, absolutely. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Thank you. Thanks. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, motion approved. Uh, A7, Alderman Fleming. Yeah, so A7, I pulled that off because I, um, I know this is just for design, but I think um, I wanted to state an overall concern about the project just in terms of as we're renovating this park that I do know needs renovation. I would like us to look at the public parking that's available. It's right on the beach and it will be a lovely park. Um, however, I know I speak to a lot of citizens <coughs> because this is the park closest to my ward and there's a lot of restricted parking. So I would just like us as we're moving forward and renovations are beginning, that parking and the access to the park for everyone in the community um, is part of the discussion that happens over there. So that was just my comment. Any further discussion? We need a second. I'm gonna need a motion. On which works. Move approval. And a second. Okay, second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Who took off A9? I did. A9, Alderman Braithwaite. <clears throat> so just a, cool. go ahead. I'd like to move item A9, the contract for fall tree purchase and planning services from Suburban Tree uh, Consortium, and it's uh, for action. <clears throat> Alderman Rainey made a second. Second. Perfect. So just a quick question, question, Dave. This dollar amount is funded, and it's probably in the packet, I just didn't see it, the 69 coming out of our 2018 budget? Correct. And then what's, because I don't have it in front of me, for our 2019 budget, how much are we budgeting for trees? I'm just... Uh, in the general fund, we generally budget 143000 a year. Uh, okay. I believe that's what it is, and it's spent both in the spring so, and the fall, so and that account, account generally gets fully spent. Okay. That was my quick question. Any other questions? Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is approved. Uh, A11. A11. Yes. Okay. Ottoman Rainey. Um, I didn't pull it. A11, Ottoman Rainey. I'm working on it. I'm oh, working. okay. <laughs> got it, got it. Um, A11. Um, this is, uh, let's see. This is an increased allocation for supplemental plan review and building inspection services contract in the amount of not to exceed $88,000 with self safe built ink um, due to a prolonged vac vacancy in the commercial plan reviewer position. The position has not been filled, not because we don't want to, but because we're having a shortage in the job market for individuals who are qualified for this work. Um, the proposed action is budget neutral. I move approval. Can I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. A13, Alderman Sufferden. Sure. Uh, I move item A13, a five-year lease to own agreement for 80 KL web terminal pay stations from Total Parking Solutions. The total cost of the city will be $1,129,000 paid out over five years at a monthly rate of $21,500. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. So who pulled this off? Or is this for first no, time reading? No, it was for discussion. Right. I guess, it was, do we have someone from parking here? I didn't pull it off, which is a quick question. So we're leasing material that we're generating revenue for, right? From. So we're going to have revenue from this, and the company's charging us to lease their equipment. Am I reading that right? Good evening, Chair and members of the committee. Erica Storley, Assistant City Manager. That's correct. The pay boxes will be leased to us, installed on the streets. Uh, each month we will take in the revenue from that and the vendor will take a portion of that. 
until the five-year agreement is complete and then they're wholly ours and then there's no more payments except for maintenance. Okay. That's a lot. <clears throat> it's approximately the same amount we paid for the parking meters, which only lasted five years, yeah. if even, and these are have an estimated life of 15 to 20 years, and they have a much better uh, value on the maintenance side. So right now, as you know, we've struggled with trying to maintain the street meters. Uh, they break as fast as we can fix them. When they break, we have to buy the parts. There's no more maintenance agreement on them. The warranty is out. Uh, and because of the limited availability of the parts, it takes a long time for us to get them back from the vendor uh, who ships them uh, out of the country to be repaired and then returned to us. So we have the problem of the parking meters are unreliable and yeah unable to be paid a lot of times 60 requests per week called into 301 for broken parking meters it's a lot of running around the city trying to change out the little parts that we have left uh, swapping them out in areas where they're not as highly utilized for places where they are highly utilized it's a game of cat and mouse i'm, I'm not going to hold this up but i'm curious to know if i missed it in the packet i'll hold myself responsible but so i feel like they're triple dipping we pay the lease we also pay for repairs, and then they also charge an administrative fee. And I guess I'd love to see what all those numbers look like together. And if it's in there, I missed it, fine, but I would just like to at a, at a later date. Sure, I can detail that out for you. But, yeah. Uh, just in a general sense, there's one fee per month for uh, that covers the maintenance on the box. And the, the best part about that is, is that it, all we have to do is call them, they come out, they fix it. So we don't need to have any of so our staff. So that's a maintenance agreement. It isn't like the one-off that we dealt with last year. Correct. That's where, okay. And then uh, the administrative expense is just the uh, actual usage of the uh, modem to connect to the internet to run the payments and, and things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion or questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? A24, uh, Alderman Fleming, will you move A24? Yeah, I move approval for, for A24, Ordinance 110-0-18, dissolving the amended redevelopment project area of the City of Evanston, Illinois, and related matters for the Washington National Tax Increment Financing District. Staff recommends we adopt this ordinance to dissolve the Washington National Tax Increment Finance <coughs> District, effective December 31st, 2018. As part of this closure, the city is required to officially notify all taxing districts regarding the, um, oh my gosh, <laughs> um, regarding this, this, this delusion, sorry, I uh, fell asleep, and any other, and any distribution, therefore, of remaining funds in the TIF, and this is for introduction. I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. I do have a quick, I'm sorry, I do have a quick question. I have to get to the page. On um, the fund summary, I'm just curious. I know it says we don't have any balance, but it has us here as a negative 150 for our ending fund balance, and I just wanted to get a little explanation around that. Good evening, Hitus Desai, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, this is the, like an estimated summary um, for the what you see for the Washington National TIF Fund. Right, so it has us closing at a negative, and so I just wanted to get clarity if... I mean, it would be the even of there won't be negative okay. because there is a one item which is a, like a transfer to general fund, so we would adjust the transfers based on the actual other expenses. Okay, all right, thank you. We had a second already on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ottoman Rainey, will you move A25? Yes, ma'am. A25 oh, is go. ordinance... Uh, one one six. We need oh. to vote. Wait, sorry. We need to vote. Oh, for the last. No, one. we need to vote. A twenty four. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Ordinance one sixteen o eighteen. Agreement between the city of Evanston and the Chicago Transit Authority for tax increment financing for future phases of the CTA Red and Purple Modernization Program. This is an agreement uh, 
for the modernization for the line in Evanston with a focus on support of the Davis Street CTA station with a local match contribution from the Washington National uh, Tax Increment Financing District. This is a follow-up action to the execution of a memorandum of understanding between the city and the CTA in June of this year. Move approval. A move for introduction. Second. A second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we have to go back to A16. I'm not sure who took off A16. Alderman Braithwaite, will you move A16? <clears throat> Madam Chair, I'd like to move item A16, Professional Services Agreement with Conley Academy, Inc. for the City of Evanston's Martial Arts Program at the Levy Center. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, no, it's, it's just a quick question. So there are a ton of martial arts studios in town. This one is out of Wilmette. I know that there's, uh, I don't know if they're still there, but I know that historically there's been a martial arts class that's taught out of Fleetwood. This one is specific to the other two centers. I was just curious to know with so many businesses in town why we had to go to Wilmette. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Lawrence Hemingway, Director of Parks and Rec. Um, Alderman Braithwaite, we put out an RFP mm -hmm. to try to make sure that our programs are being um, fresh, new, that we're providing in the facilities. We reached out to each, the RFP went out specifically to each and every Evanston martial arts um, person. Okay. This particular RFP is for Taekwondo, okay. um, not uh, karate or other disciplines. And this was the only respondent that responded um, who was a certified licensed Taekwondo instructor. That was the perfect. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I believe it was Alderman Fleming that pulled off A19. You? No? Mm -hmm. Patrick, where are you? Will you move it first? Oh, sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I'd like to move item A19, the resolution 71-R-18, professional services agreement with uh, James Moran uh, Center for Youth Advocacy. So several months ago, we passed uh, a resolution to automatically expunge a lot of these records. We're still having communication through our alternatives to arrest. And so I think it was two, th was this one 2,000 per student? If I, if I read that correctly, I don't yes. have it in, in front of me. So I'm trying to understand with the changing of the state laws that are gonna automatically do it, Yep. Why are we funding this at this time? Excellent question. The state law, first off, Patrick Keenan Devlin, Executive Director of the James B. Moran Center for Youth Advocacy. I also had off today, so that's why I'm not in a suit. I it's apologize. Fine. I did not have time to run home and change. Uh, the answer to the question is the Illinois General Assembly and then Governor Rauner signed into law in 2017 an automatic expungement bill, but it only applies to juveniles. Uh, in August of 2017, the governor of the General Assembly also acted in expanding our ceiling statutes, but okay. that only applies to adults, and that's why at the Moran Center we've been busier than ever because there are more people who actually are eligible for ceiling. You just so it's just for the juveniles. That is doesn't. the automatic expungement law only pertains to the juvenile population. So we'll population. continue to see this expense moving forward. Adults continue to have very complex criminal okay. remediation issues. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. making that distinction. Tammy, can you hold one moment before you leave? Tammy, can you hold one moment? Go ahead. Any more discussion on that? No. Thank you. Um, do we have any items for discussion? No, we have oh, um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Do we have any items for discussion? Oh, so. 
Alderman Rainey, uh, or Madam Chair Alderman Rainey, Hitesh, I had I'd spoken to uh, the city manager about this in the past discussions. We have had conversations to be able to look at the outstanding fines and where those fines are associated with what citations. And so my conversation with the city manager, somewhere there was some miscommunication in terms of what I was requesting. So I okay. now would like to see that information that he said is available. Okay. So similar to we had a very detailed analysis of our parking fees year by year, broken down uh, by residents and non-residents and out of state, I'm very curious to see what our debt load looks like uh, under our administrative adjudication department. Outstanding fines that are not collected. Not and correct. how far back can you go? Okay. All right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? Yeah, we, we did. So, I mean, the information is out there. I'm still, I'm curious to know I'm what it is. Just making sure we did hire one. We did. Right, right. So, just to clarify, Alvin Rainey, again, just want to know what that dollar looks like. Would be interesting. And I still have a question for you, Tammy, Miss Nunez. And then, um, yeah, that's it. I just want to know what it looks like. That's it. That you had a question for Tammy? No, no, no. After, I'm sorry. Outside of the agenda. Oh, okay. Outside, Any further communication? We have a motion to adjourn. So move. Sec uh, second. Did, did you get a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. <laughs>